Got Tally coming to you from the Worldwide Headquarters and Network Connection with our very first franchise owner, the most experienced, not the most senior, Mr. Moose Rosenfeld. Hey, Scott, how are you? Good to see you. Now, let's be totally transparent. Moose and I have been buddies for years and years and years. And uh, actually, we're working together on another little project when we first came up with the idea, which I'm sure we'll talk about today. But uh, Moose has been at it for, golly, it's going to be nine years in a few months. Yes, sir. Who would have ever thought? Well, let's start from the beginning. So uh, we are talking to the original, the one and only Moose Rosenfeld, son of Dickie Rosenfeld. Yes, sir. How did we come up with that name? Tell them that story, Moose. You know, I was a very hyper young kid, and my dad didn't want to call me Bull in a china closet, so he thought Moose, and he said, hang on to that name, Padna, because one day you'll appreciate it. And when he would call me that in front of my friends as a young kid, you know, and a teenager uh, through high school, my legal name is John. I went by Johnny, which is so foreign to me right now and has been forever. And, uh, he, and I said, oh, God, Daddy, please don't call me that. And he goes, hey, Padna. One day you'll appreciate it. I went to work for a couple of guys on radio in Shreveport, Louisiana, July 26th of 1975. And it was a country station. The owners were Smokey Hot and Jerry Black, and they knew me as Moose. And they said, John, you're Moose. And I was like, oh, my God, this is really happening. And it's been the greatest brand, just like my dad said it would be. Nobody remembers a John, but they do remember Moose. And so... For him, for I am so thankful that he had the foresight, you know, to call me Moose. And everybody knows the Moose man. Well, he sure does. I always tell Moose he ought to run for mayor because he'd sure win. Hey, Moose, let's jump in. So, uh, you know, better part of nine years ago, right about this time of year, uh, uh, we met. And I told you about a little idea I had about building an organization to uh, build networking groups. And you were involved with another organization at that point in time. Tell me, tell the audience about that little experience. You know, I've been a member of my first networking group uh, was called Exec Connect. And, you know, that was my first foray into, into, you know, what the power of being a part of a business networking group, a referral group, mastermind, if you will. And I did that until Joanne uh, decided to shut it down and move to Dallas. And uh, so I, my wife had been a member of a BNI group, and I was asked to sub quite often. And so um, I started getting some business and make, meeting some good people. And I did that for five and a half years. And then I'll never forget, in November of 2014, you called me and said, hey, Moose, meet me at this restaurant in Washington. I want to tell you what I'm getting ready to do. And I thought you had absolutely lost your mind going up against the, the, the biggest networking organization in the world. But I knew this. I wasn't looking for a business because I had a successful digital marketing company. Prior to that, I worked at radio stations for 30 years in sales and then upper level management roles. I knew people. I knew business. And when you told me about NIA, the two things that stuck out to me were technology driven, professionally run, and that I knew that you guys were sitting on some technology. You know, there's no more power than showing up. And I say 90% of life is showing up. And, you know, I noodled this all during the holidays of 2014. I went to the launch of Network and Action Heights Group in January of 15. And I thought I knew a lot of people there. And I was like, where did you get all these people over the holidays? Well, you're, you're, you're well known. People f trust you. They follow you. The same thing for me. I went to the January meeting, the February meeting, and the March meeting. And I was really noodling whether or not I was going to move forward, you know, with, with becoming a franchisee. Uh, they gave me an ultimatum uh, that I, I had accepted a role as an ambassador after doing, you know, two years of membership, secretary, treasurer. They asked if I would be president or vice president. And I said, I want a year off from any type of leadership. I just want to be a member. And then the executive director for BNI Houston Southwest or Houston West said, why don't you become an ambassador? And I said, what's that entail? She told me, and I said, I can give you so many hours a month, none, none more. Well, that quickly, uh, you know, it, it surpassed what I was, you know, able to do, wanted to, wanted to do. And then I, I, uh, I'll never forget, I showed up on a Friday morning out in Fort Bend County 
And uh, for, so which, those of you listening, it was about a 40 minute drive from your home. Correct. At six o'clock in the morning, I left for seven o'clock, you know, meeting that she was trying to do to see if she could start a, a chapter out in Fort Bend County. And at the end of it, I said, Kathy, this counts as one of my three, right? So she goes, you're going to count this? And I said, hell yeah, I left my house at six o'clock this morning. And I said, yeah, I really am. And so she said, uh, I said, Kathy, I can't give you any more than what I'm already given. You know, I have a successful digital marketing company. I have tons of clients that I need to serve. And so she said, why don't you, let's don't be an ambassador. You can reapply for membership and you can pay the current rate, you know, or you can wait till October when it's going to go to this rate. And I said, let me noodle that. I'll never forget. I came home and said, I, I'm, a, I'm calling Scott. I called you and said, what do I need to do to become the first franchisee? I wasn't afraid. I've built radio stations. I've built a digital marketing company. I've never run away from a challenge. And I knew that I could do this. People do business with those that they know, trust, and respect. And my, my sphere of influence said, Moose, if you do this, people are going to follow. And so I did. And it's been the greatest eight and a half years of my life. So going back to that uh, uh, giver's gain up until a point where you just can't give anymore. But uh, how it, many, how many meetings were you making a month as a volunteer? I'm just curious. Well, I had to do my my uh, memorial chapter, and then they expected me to go do two other groups during the course of the month. You know, like I, they wanted me to miss sometimes my meeting to go to, you know, another chapter's meeting and, and I go and, and you were basically getting your six hundred dollars a month dues compensated right a year six hundred annually well I think it was even three hundred and ninety five back then oh so you're making about making about three dollars an hour on that gig pretty much you know and, and today you run four really successful groups that is correct we're going to talk to your wife in a bit she has transferred out of her former business to purchase a network and action franchise so all in all, you could say it's been a good move for the Rosenfeld family, I guess. You know, it really has. I never thought I was having more fun with network and action than I was, honestly, with uh, with my digital media company. You know, I was very niche in the lanes that I, you know, worked with on on, uh, you know, digital marketing for my clients. But often it was like, how do I know it's working, Moose? Nobody says they're seeing my video and I go, they never will. We're on 12, 15,000 websites and different zip codes with different keywords. So the chances of you ever seeing it are, not, it's impossible. And uh, when you can't see it, touch it, feel it, 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 you know, it's like an expense versus an investment. And so when I look at the relationships, I think about what's important to me, and it's always been about relationships. I Many of the people that are members now, I didn't know three years ago, I didn't know eight years ago, but we have become great friends, like family, like brothers and sisters and extended family. And where can you get that? I, d I certainly didn't get that, you know, calling on clients and radio. I mean, I had some good clients, but I never considered them family. Yeah, uh, I, handle their, I handle their advertising. You know, uh, so you may have had a little bit of what I would call sort of negative motivation to get into the Network in Action franchise by being pushed into it by a person that might've been taking advantage of your big heart, but you didn't stay there for eight years. You didn't stay with network action the last eight years because of that. What did, what have you found out that surprised you about how much you enjoy this over the last eight years? Maybe it was what you were just saying, but. You know, Scott, that is such a great question. I look at, I look at every day when I wake up, I know that I have the ability to make a difference in one of my members' lives. And often I don't know who that is, but as I start reaching out to people, you know, my members, and then they say, hey, Moose, call this person. I know that they'd be a great addition to the group. Uh, the referrals that we get from our members is absolutely incredible. I just know this. I'm blessed beyond belief to be a community builder with NIA, and I cherish every single day being able to do that. Yeah. What, what do you think... Uh... So we started seeing the history of networking, and you were a big part of that with weekly meetings and little or no technology and a lot of volunteers giving until they can't give anymore. But what do you see as the future of networking? Well, I, I honestly, I believe it's more important than ever because, look, a lot of people, you know, and I, a lot of people can't afford five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month on radio and sustain it. 
A lot of people can't afford, you know, 2,500 to 5,000, 10,000 a month on the internet with digital marketing. We're a $2,000 annual investment with a guaranteed return on a member's annual investment. I've never been able to offer that in any of the marketing that I've ever done. Part of the reason why I decided to move forward with that was because of the guarantee. I'd run into somebody at the grocery store and I'd go, oh my God, they're going to say that it doesn't work. You know, this digital marketing, I know this works because if you're willing to take the time to build relationships instead of it becoming just nothing but transactional and the quality of people that we're able to attract through our model, monthly, professionally run, great technology. We have so many, we've become really in the over the eight and a half years we are really a business solutions company for mid to small mid, small to mid-sized business they can't get what we offer anywhere else and i'm looking at all those the uh plaques behind you i'm i'm super proud of all the different awards that nia has gotten received over the years it's incredible and it makes me proud to represent the brand so awesome. So so let's talk about that guaranteed ROI thing, because a lot of people are scared of it, especially when they start to look at a franchise. They're like, oh, my gosh, you know, what if I go sell a bunch of people and a year later I have to give it to them all free? It's not impacted you at all in a negative way in nine years. No, it really hasn't. You know, if I've had to, well, first off, there are some criteria that the member has to do in order to qualify for the ROI. Generally, it's about a 10 time on the uh annual investment. And then of course, it's like, tell me what an average customer is, you know, worth to you, how long do you keep them? Uh, how often do they buy from you? Um, and, you know, if, if on average, if it's five to 10, say it's 5,000. Okay. If we're 20,000, I need to come up with, I need to come up with, uh, you know, um, four or five referrals. Yeah. Four or five referrals during the course of the year which I don't think is really hard because if it's not through me, one of my members, you know, has the opportunity to also pass referrals as well. Yeah. So it's a lot of people get hung up on the guaranteed. ROI. I think if I'm right over the last eight years, I think we've had about 17 members actually earn the second year out of thousands. So it's, it's and the, you know what, and that's happened to me, Scott. And then that person, because I honored it, that person brought me three people. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I had to give away a membership, but at the end of the day, I got three new members out of that just from this one person. So Let's change gears for a minute. Talk to a business owner who maybe doesn't have a lot of experience with networking, maybe a younger business owner. Uh, why is networking important? What What is it meant to you? I mean, I know you've been a great networker and saw the value, but everyone does it. You know, if you're if you look at this, it's like, I'm making phone calls or reaching out to people to first see if I can help them in any way, shape or form. You know, what's your biggest need? Um, I might know somebody, if you don't know, who do you need to get to know? I have 3,000 plus people in my phone. Who do you want me to introduce you to? I'm not selling. I'm simply trying to start building a relationship. And if I do that, and if on a consistent basis, a lot of people don't like the phone. I cherish the phone. It's the greatest business tool ever invented because if I'm on the phone with somebody and I'm looking at how many online reviews they have, I can say, hey, by the way, how are you getting those reviews? And they might say, we send it through an invoice. When they pay, they can click. And I said, how about some technology that you know is right then and there? Simply put their the customer's first name and their and their cell phone, and you already have it, you know, hey, by the way, I'm going to send you a link. Would you share your thoughts about what we did for you? Um, and then immediately they're getting a, they're getting a, a, a five-star review on, you know, just through the, through our mobile app. And that, that's some of the technology and extra benefits you're talking about when it comes sure. to business solutions. You know, hey, if, so uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, if you just look at this, like, you know what? Um, I, I want to see how many people I can reach out to and how, who needs help. I don't consider this sales in a sense uh, because I'm not trying to sell anybody. And, if, and, and I always say when people say, well, how much does this cost? You know, I'm like, OK, I'm not selling a car over the Internet. You know, I'm not trying to give you a haircut over the phone. It doesn't work. Let's meet. Let me see what's in your heart. Let me see if I can help you. And if we can then maybe we can do business together. Um, but you might be, we might be a fit. We may not. 
But the best thing to do is give me 15 minutes. Let me see if there's some need that I can help you. And whether it's a connection referral or whatever it is, and often it's I can I can connect them with somebody right then and there that they're looking for. I was thinking this next question may be a tough one, but I've heard a story that I'm betting you're going to recall. A member, a favorite member story about someone that's just gotten a tremendous benefit boost in their business over the last eight years by partnering with you and your network and action groups. You know what, Scott, there are several, you know, but I'm going to talk about one that I think is really very cool. I had a gentleman by the name, have a gentleman by the name of Troy Stanton, and he had a phone, he had a phone and cabling company. And then I also had in the same, my Galleria group, um, a lady by the name Eileen Tai, who owned a IT services company called Genetic. And they were referring each other all the time because they were just such good verticals for one another. I met Troy through a referral and then I met Eileen through a referral. And so um, they, again, were referring one another, you know, all the time. And in, uh, in 2019, they called me and they said that they had merged their companies. It was the first network in action business marriage. And for that, I know that I had a role in it because they were parts of my group. And it, to this day, they will tell you, thank goodness for Moose, because Eileen and I connected and we were able to help one another. And now they're, now they're awesome. Their company is flourishing so big time, it's unreal. And there's, I have so many of those stories uh, that um, that I'm so proud of. And it's just because as a community builder, that's what I'm doing. I'm. It, it's really crazy. You know, I see, I see franchisors who will talk about the ability to make a difference in the world. And maybe they're a, a hair salon franchise. And I'm like, you're cutting hair. Come on. But yeah. on a scale of one to 10, answer each one of these. I got three. On a scale of one to 10, your ability to generate income based on what you do is it very low one or is it a 10? It's a 10. You know, I mean, if you have one group, um, you serve that group. What happened? The model was different when I very first started in 2015. Uh, April, I, I uh, decided to move forward with, uh, with, uh, with Network in Action. Greatest business decision I have ever made, hands down. Uh, and then you... We met at this restaurant and you said I was really flourishing with one group and I still have my digital marketing company. And then you said, Moose, you should start a second group. I know that you have enough love in your heart to, you know, to, to help other people. And I thought, I do? That's crazy. I because so you were so loyal to that financial yeah. services and realtor yeah. and all the members in that group. Yeah, yeah I really was. But um, I thought, you know, parents have more than one kid. And, so, you know, they love all of them. And so yeah. when you start turning away uh, potential members because those categories are filled, well, then I was walking away from income. So I started my second group, at my launch Galleria, April of uh, July of 15. Um, and then January of 16, I launched my Bel Air group and I started flourishing with that. I had an ankle replacement surgery in 2016, November 9th. And um, and then I got through 16 and I was running both the Bel Air and the Galleria groups. And then in April of 18, I probably walked away from seven potential members. And so I'm calling other franchisees to see if they were needing this person or this industry or this because I didn't have the I didn't have that industries available. And then I thought, man, what are you doing, dude? You know, let's take this to over six figures. And so. Uh, I did, and it's been a great, great decision for me. So every day I get to help members, and now you and I co-own a B2B group, and I'm thrilled that I can, you know, place quality members. And I will say this, the majority of my members are the owners, decision makers in their company, or sales reps that have been in the industry for three plus years, preferably W-2 versus 1099. So I have a lot of boxes that need to be checked. And, uh, you know, before I say yes. Okay, so on a scale of one to 10 on the money side, you're a 10. What about a scale of one to 10 on the personal freedom, ability to take a vacation, go play golf, have days off? Well, you know what? Um, I, uh, that is a real one of the real reasons why I love NIA because of the freedom, you know, to be able to work 
be able to travel. Lisa, my wife and I love to go to Mexico at least, you know, twice a year. Sometimes it's three times a year because it's so close. Um, I, up at, you know, I love to play golf and, you know, I played a lot with you during the summer when it stays light till quarter of nine, we did the twilights, you know, got out there and played, but, you know, if, if you want the freedom to be able to live your life, your best life, this is a no brainer. I'm telling you. Okay. And then one more important thing to people on a one to 10, your, your, um, ability with this tool, with this, uh, vehicle to make a difference in the world. And I know you're making a difference in the world of your members, but talk for a minute about Bellinzio or one of these other organizations y'all have touched. You bet. So one of my members, uh, Teresa Strong, she owns a nonprofit called Bellinzio. That means new beginning in Italian. And she helps underprivileged women uh, get back on the right side of life. These women that it's nobody that I would know could relate to, but I know they've had challenges and she gets them on the right side of life uh, by helping them uh, do a eight week uh, fitness and nutrition program. And these women graduate by completing a 5K and they have never done much. They've been abused. They've been drugs. They've been in prison. They've done all these different things in the life that I could never relate to. And, and her mission, I absolutely love her and her mission of helping underprivileged women. And so as a network and action franchise, we're required to do community projects once a year. And I'll tell you, I love raising money for her, awareness and raising money. And it just gives me great joy to be able to participate and have, I'll say a small to, you know, I'll say a small part on her overall success. I'm hopefully being a little bit on the shy side with that because I know that through all of network and action, uh, through all the all the people that she has touched, she just did a she just did one of her big fundraisers uh, and she raised twenty thousand dollars through her five k, ten k, and kids k uh, race that she does, and then a lot of the women that you know also uh, walk in order for them to get their diploma, you know, that they graduated. Um, I have two. The other is uh, Texas Children's Hospital. Um, I'm a co-founder of a golf tournament called the Bad Pants Open. We've been around for 25 years and we raise monies for the, specifically for the newborn center at Texas Children's Hospital. And I'm really proud to say though, I just missed my first one in 25 years. Um, we have raised in excess of eight and a half million dollars helping families affected by early births. Man, that is just something that I am beyond proud of. So it's be, having the ability to have the time to volunteer, to give back to the community. So the franchise, the franchise definitely checks a few boxes in terms of controlling your income, controlling yeah. your freedom, the time, yeah. and, uh, and also uh, to be, really make a difference in the world. Let me, let me ask you. Uh, it's definitely a 10. I want to jump into one last thing before we get off. But before we do, Tell me one thing you'd say to someone looking to possibly enter into the Network in Action franchise family. You know what? Uh, Nike has a slogan that says, just do it. <laughs> so don't be afraid. Richard Branson also says, you know, if you don't know how to do it, say yes, and then go figure out how. We have the tools. We have the resources a complete back office of everything that you could possibly need. We call that Nest because that's where everything, everything is for the franchise owners. Our technology, I think, is second to none from the group wall to the business solutions that we offer, that we offer our members. Um, even uh, we have a business assessment software that a member, I had one member that thought that his uh, strength was marketing after he took this business assessment. It turns out it was his weak spot and he doubled his marketing budget, then doubled it again and then doubled it again. But he went from almost being broke in the copier business to one of the most successful label copier printers uh, companies in the country, if not the most. Um, and, he, you know, he was spending, you know, 2,500, he took it to 5,000, 10,000, 40,000 a month on Google AdWords and then up to 75,000 a month, but he's generating almost a million dollars a month in sales from that. 
he said, thank you for the software and thank you for being you and connecting me with so many good people. We have the, we have the resources to be phenomenal. Yeah, that's awesome. So you're humming along, you're enjoying life. You just gotten back from, uh, from uh, Puerto Vallarta a couple yeah. of months ago. Yeah. And you're on your way on a cruise. Uh, we're talking about going on a lot of vacations. You're home yeah. for 10 days or so. And the good Lord had another plan. Tell us about the heart attack. Uh, heart attacks happen to everybody but Moose Rosenfeld because I've always been healthy. Um, yeah, on October the 14th, I had I had just completed all four of my NIA meetings for October. And on Friday morning, I woke up and I, my chest was just super tight. And I thought it was indigestion, which most guys think, oh, hell, I ain't having a heart attack. It's just indigestion. And my wife was going to go to her high school reunion and she said, I don't want to leave you. And I said, HP, honey, bunny. I said, HP, just go. It's indigestion. I'll be fine. She reluctantly got on the road. And uh, you called on not related to, you know, other than just a, you know, checking, hey, man, what's going on? You don't sound great. And I said, Scott, man, my chest has been super tight all morning. And I tried to get sick and that didn't help. My next door neighbor brought a Coke over and that didn't help. But, and I said, and I feel this thing moving to my left shoulder. And you said, I'll be at your house in five minutes. And you did. And you took me to the emergency room signature, not far from our house. And they put me on lockdown, you know, and you were kind enough as much as you have going on in your life. You stayed with me. Lisa turned around. You called my, you called Lisa. She had made it to Dallas and turned around immediately and I've never had a cardiologist because I've never had any heart issues. Well, Lisa called uh, my brother, Jim, and my brother, Jim, got me in to see his cardiologist by the grace of God. And, and being well networked, yes. your, brother, your brother could call in a chip yeah. because he had done so many favors for the cardiologist in the hospital. Think about that story. I mean, that's the ultimate networking story. Yeah. He was able to call in a favor because he had done so much for them. That's networking. But go ahead. Um, so, you know, I get to, uh, I'll never forget, they uh, they said, they came back out and said, yeah, you've had a heart attack and your EKG is horrible. And it turned out that I had 100% blockage in the right artery and I had 70% in the left. And I, they, uh, I spent, uh, I got into Methodist Hospital, with, which is the place if you're going to be sick to go to. And uh, things were humming along. I was in a room in 1903. And then on Saturday, they put a, they put the um, the stent in. And Sunday night, I just, Sunday morning, I think I was okay. Sunday night, I or Sunday, sometimes Sunday, I just did a complete nose night. And I mean, it was serious. They didn't, they really didn't know if they were going to be able to save me. To make a long story short, I had so much stuff in me uh, that it was unbelievable, from heart pumps to swan catheters in my neck to... Um, God, name it and I'm laying in the in the I was in Methodist for 12 nights and eight of those were in the cardiovascular ICU and they you never get any sleep because they're in there all the time poking and prodding and reading this and taking blood and you know I mean whatever it was and I thought am I going to be able to do network in action it is beyond besides my wife and my immediate family it's the most important thing in my life. And I thought, is this going to be taken away from me? And Scott, it made me just realize how blessed I am. My dad always said, life ain't a dress rehearsal, partner. If you're not doing what you want to do, then figure out a way to do it, whatever that is. And I'm sitting there and I'm going, what is life going to look like? I mean, I don't know how long I'm going to be in here. Am I going to be able to work? Am I going to be able to to do what I absolutely love to do. And by the grace of God and the power of prayer from not only my family, my friends, but my network and action family, my the NIA franchisees, I was added to so many prayer lists, across, not only in, the, in Houston, but literally across the country. And for that, I am so appreciative. And that God said, it's not your time you're going to stay here and you're going to continue to make a difference in so many people's lives. And I'm given the opportunity through network and action. It's my why. If there was ever a why 
And I've always heard that if your why isn't big enough to make you cry, then your why isn't big enough. And every day I go, that's my why. And I, at my meetings, I go to the members, I go, you're my why. You're absolutely my why. I love to be able to make an impact, make a difference in so many people's lives. And thank God, I hope I have another 25 years to be able to do this. I'm 70 in March. And I thought, what would I be doing? I don't want to retire. I'd be bored. I can't play golf every day. I'd be bored stiff. And because I get to hang out with people my age, middle-aged, younger entrepreneurs, uh, I know I can have an impact on everybody. And that's my why. And I love Network in Action. And I thank you for your leadership. If it weren't for you and you're never satisfied with status quo, you were always looking for ways to help us franchisees, community builders, but also the tools to help for us to help our members. And for that, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you wanted to do Network in Action. If I had a regret, we you didn't come up with this 15 years ago. That's you know. Right. So well, I have a whole list of other questions, but I'm going to leave it here. I think for anyone that's sitting on the fence that doesn't want to take a step forward because of fear or because they don't think you can make a really good income and make a difference, all they need to do is contact you or listen to your, your little bit of testimonial here. So I appreciate you and your family so much, as you know, I hope you know, and I'm forever grateful for your success and especially grateful for your health now. So thank you so much for, for joining us today, Mooser. Love you, buddy. Thank I you, Scott. You Thank you. Thank y'all.